And um, so we're going to fly up north from New York over Buffalo, through the Great Plains of Canada, into the uh, beautiful heartlands of British Columbia, over to Nelson in British Columbia, which is a it's a hinterland uh, town, uh, city. And uh, I've actually been in British Columbia further west to Vancouver and Whistler and um, Victoria Island, Tofino. It's glorious country out there. And uh, I, you, you mentioned your, your community is quite small, but it's a very beautiful sattvic area of the world. Um, so our next two speakers are married. They are Shiman uh, Trilokunath Prabhu and uh, Shimati uh, Mahodjwala Didi. And just to uh, give a very potted, very, very quick history, um, Didi came to uh, Srila Prabhupada in 1974. And her husband, I don't know if they're married at the time, maybe going to tell us, uh, perhaps not, um, uh, uh, came, uh, came to Prabhupada the following year. And they both met Srila Gurudev um, in Nelson. Oh, I'm assuming you live in Nelson as well, but you met, no, you met Gurudev in Salt Springs, right? I'm, God, I haven't got my notes here, so apologies for any mistakes, but you live in Nelson. And um, well, you've got a whole hour now between you. You share it as you like. Uh, so it's um, 8, uh, 8.45 here. It's midday 45 there. I, I assume British Columbia is eight hours behind. Have I got the right time? So please yeah. take us all the way through to uh, 1.45, uh, however you'd like to spell it. You can interchange. You can kind of speak together. You can go one after the other. It's totally up to you. Uh, a very, very warm welcome from Bharti Zoom, from one Chaitanya family, and welcome to the Vyasa Sun, the Zoom Siya, Vyasa Sun. Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Thank you for your introduction, your kind introduction, Prabhu. Um, okay. I hope not too embarrassing. I, I don't want to embarrass you too much. Oma Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militang Jena Chasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kalpaja Rubyascha Kripasindu Vyavacha Padita Nampava Nevyo Vaishnavyo Namo Namaha All glories to Srila Prabhupada without whom none of us would know anything about Krishna and devotional service and all glories to Srila Gurudev who opened up the secrets that Prabhupada left for us so that we could further understand his glories and his instructions and all glories to all of the devotees of both of those great souls and of our Guru Varga who are constantly showering their mercy upon us and without whom we would be nowhere. Um, so uh, as, as Prabhu mentioned, uh, we, we took initiation from Srila Prabhupada and uh, we're fortunate enough to serve in uh, Srila Prabhupada's movement for a few years before he entered Nichilila. Um, and, uh, and for uh, many years after that, endeavored our best, as many of us, our, our God brothers and God sisters did, to uh, try and maintain as well as we could. And, uh, and uh, the history is well known to many people, so we won't belabor it. Um, but we had heard a little bit about Srila Gurudev uh, in the later years, and, uh, and some of it came as a bit of a cautionary tale, because many of our God brothers and God sisters were a little gun shy because of things that had uh, had transpired within ISKCON. So we didn't pursue, uh, we didn't pursue uh, Gurudev's trail uh, too ardently, but uh, Gurudev came into our lives in a rather unexpected way. And I'll let Mahojvala take up the, the narrative at that point. Hi, Krishna. Uh, so in uh, 2000, we received a package in the mail out of the blue, really out of Krishna, out of the blue. Um, it was a series of Srila Gurudev's books. So we first actually met Srila Gurudev through his books. And um, they arrived from our godbrother Sarva, uh, who you probably all know as the Scottish minstrel that went around Badger and would sing that beautiful song to Srila Gurudev um, at the festival. But um, so there was just a tiny note saying, Hare Krishna, uh, here's these beautiful books please send $108. So it was, uh, <laughs> it was so wonderful to be introduced to Gurudev that way. And um, we didn't have a lot of money, but the same day that that arrived, my out of the blue, my um, great aunt, who I never met, didn't know even existed. I got this check for an inheritance. So we were able to pay Sarva and we decided we would go to Maui 
to um, see the devotees there because we had heard Gurudev was having festivals there. It wasn't his festival time, but Sarva was there and he had made this connection. We said, okay, well, we'll come to Maui and see what this is about and have his association. So so we we decided to just take one book with us when we went on our it was really a holiday as well you know and and so we decided to take the venu gita with us it is venu gita because it had this beautiful picture of krishna with with radha and the coward boys coming by and the, the venu gita painting which i'm sure you all know so uh, so we took it down with us and we hadn't read anything of, of Gurudev's up to that point. So uh, one day we're, we're sitting on the beach and I pulled the Venu Gita out of, my, out of my bag and decided to start reading it. And I started reading the introduction. And, uh, and in it, uh, Gurudev speaks about, about the fallacy of people thinking that uh, one cannot relish the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, uh, the, uh, that har high Harikata, unless one becomes first qualified. And Gurudev was making the point that uh, it is by hearing those pastimes that one becomes qualified, that one becomes purified and qualified, just like the Srila Prabhupada used to speak about the, the glass with the, with the ink in it. When you pour the milk in, then the ink becomes displaced. So I was reading this and I was, and I was, uh, I was really getting turned on by, by Gurudev's kata. It was obviously, he, it was coming from the same line as what I'd been reading in Prabhupada's Chaitanya Charitamrita and the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. And so I started reading it out loud to Mahoj because I, I, I was like, listen to this, this stuff is real, is really nectar. And I, it was only later that I found out that that, that actually, that essay, that uh, speech of Gurudev's was included in another of his books called Five Essential Essays. Um, and that, that introduction to Venu Gita is one of those. So, uh, so that, was, that was our first sort of, our, when we first became attracted to Srila Gurudev was from, from hearing from him, which of course is, you know, is, uh, is how, you know, one develops an attachment because that's, the, you know, the knowledge acquiring sense, you know, is, uh, is the ear. So, uh, so then after our return, uh, we returned and, uh, and not much transpired for the next little while, but then suddenly, uh, again, out of the blue, I got a call from uh, Govinda Dasi, whom some of you may know, she has, uh, she's since left us, but uh, she was a friend of ours from before, and she called and said that, uh, that uh, then, uh, whom we knew as Jadarani wanted to come up to to Canada, and did we know of any place that she might be able to stay? Because they were, you know, coming up and uh, and wanting to have some programs and so on. So I said, well, you know, of course she can stay at our at our home uh, because we, you know we knew of of Jadarani. Her uh, her uh, reputation preceded her, and I knew that she'd been, you know, one of Prabhupada's first uh, disciples, and that she had uh, and that she had painted so many of the beautiful pictures that we had admired and been attracted to earlier in our devotional lives. So, uh, so uh, we invited her to come up and, uh, and she came, uh, as, as fate would have it, she came first, we, we took her up to the Sharanagati village, which was, uh, was to become our, um, our home later on. Um, and the, the devotees there again were were a little bit reticent, a little because they knew that she was also a spokesperson for for Srila Gurudev. So um, they asked her to speak about her art and Prabhupada's pastimes only. Now, now it is important to note that Srila Gurudev had been personally there in Sharanagati in 1996 when he started his world tour. Uh, when he started traveling and preaching and left India, he did come over to Sharanagati. Up, up in the interior of, of BC uh, to help out our godbrother Jagadish, who was who had asked for some some elevated association because he was struggling. Um, so, uh, as as fate would have it, uh, when we left after the program that that uh, that Shamrani Didi had uh, at the temple there. Govinda Dasi and she had brought up some books and uh, we opened up the back of our van and we were asking if anybody wanted to take any of the books and a couple of the um, older devotees up there said no no we we don't the devotees here don't want these books on the property so they were they were a little they were st standoffish and and a little guarded about the whole thing 
so we said, okay, uh, actually Mahojwala said, we will, uh, she folded her hands very humbly and said, we will abide by the wishes of the devotees here in the community. Um, uh, so, so at that point, we, we sort of backed off a little bit. We had a very nice program at Swami Mills where Duty Dar Swami was. Um, and uh, and we also uh, Shamarani went to over to Yamuna uh, Devi's uh, ashram. She had a, an ashram on the, uh, on the property there. And they had a very nice, because Yamuna also uh, being a very early disciple of Srila Prabhupada, she and, and Shamarani had, had many memories of, uh, of Srila Prabhupada. So, so that was a very sweet meeting. Um, uh, so at that point, uh, after we went down and had a program at Duty Dars, uh, he was uh, he and the devotees there were very uh, very enthusiastic about the Hari Kata, um, and so we asked him if he would like to uh, keep a box of the books to distribute. At that point, he said, "Well, no, I'd like to read them first, so I understand, you know, because this is new to me." And so we, at that point. Uh, we retreated, we left and we went back down to our house in Victoria and we started having programs with Shamarani Didi there. Um, and, uh, and people just started showing up from everywhere. It was like, uh, it was like uh, Gurudev was the honey and everybody were, were the bees. They just started showing up. We had family members, the people came from Swami Mills. We had people coming in from Victoria and we just started having, having these ecstatic programs. And we were learning about Gurudev really from the, for the first time. And, and I remember asking Shamarani, you know, is, you know, is being with, with, uh, with Srila Narayan Maharaj kind of like being with Prabhupada? And she said, it's exactly the same, you know, it was so exciting to hear this from someone who had had a lot of, of you know, close association with Srila Prabhupada. So I immediately started recording Gurudev's tapes so that we could have something after Shamarani left to, to listen to. Um, am I missing anything here? Um, so in during that visit, um, she was with Govinda Dasi, not not our uh, senior god sister Govinda Dasi, Govinda Dasi, who contributed to the Rose Avenue Center in Los Angeles. Uh, and she also orchestrated the Salt Spring Island Festival, which um, so Shamarani and Govinda and I went over to Salt Spring for the afternoon and we coordinated where the festival would be held and Govinda Dasi has a home over on the island and there's a big, there's a center there. And um, for the devotees that participated coming to Salt Spring when Gurudev showed up there, it was absolutely the best festival. It was <laughs> so beautiful. Um, but anyway, so so this they were setting it up and we were organizing it. So it was made, um, the arrangement was made that next year, next May, Gurude would come and we would publicize the festival and, and invite all the Vaishnavas. So so that year kind of went by. We moved to Sharanagati and um also, in the meantime, our, our, our son, uh, Jayananda, who had, who had just been, his, his interest in devotional service had really just been rekindled after his, as, as most of you know, who have children, they, they, they seem to have a need to reject the, you know, the upbringing of their parents at some point and, and be rebellious. So he'd had his, his, his period of sort of moving away from Krishna consciousness. And then he'd come back in and it started asking me questions about the Bhagavad Gita and so on, and was really kind of becoming interested. And I told him, look, you've got to come over here and see or hear some of these classes and, and, you know, be part of some of these programs. And he became so turned on that uh, uh, by Shamarani's Harikata and about her speaking about Srila Gurudev that he followed us over to Salt Spring Island and then decided that he was going to have to go down to Alachua and meet this, this Srila Narayan Maharaj for himself. And he was going to, and he had no money and he decided that he was just going to put it on his, on his MasterCard and figure out how he was going to pay for it later. And, uh, and Govinda Dasi, bless her heart said, look, I've got some points on my, on my, uh, on my card. I'm going to, I'm going to escort you to a, a trip down to see Srila Gurudev because I think you would love it. He immediately just fell down on the floor. He was just so relieved. Went down to Alachua, returned with a shaved, shaven head and, uh, and uh, sort of that sort of inspired us more. And he was on his way to go to Braj Mandala Parikram that year. So he kind of, <laughs> kind of passed us on the way out the door. 
So then, yes. Yeah, so then in 2000, we moved to Sharanagati. And uh, shortly after that, um, a group of the devotees uh, uh, headed by then Aranya Maharaj, now Prem Prayojan Prabhu, um, came, up to the, came up to the farm and had a, had a program up there. And, uh, and the, the effect on a lot of us up there was, was quite remarkable because it was like discovering an arm of our family that we had never known that we had. Uh, and there, was, there were all these devotees who were coming and speaking about the same things, you know, about the, the six Goswamis, uh, uh, about Srila Rupa Goswami's teachings, about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was like, it was like discovering another part of your family, you know, you, you know going on a transcendental ancestry.com and finding out you know, so uh, so it was really very uh, very sweet, and as uh, many of the devotees um, were were actually moved to tears by discovering that because a lot of us had been had been struggling in a little bit of a uh, felt a little bit like a spiritual vacuum after Srila Prabhupada because when Srila Prabhupada was there, he was as Gurudev would say, he was always there to reach out and twist the ear of a devotee when they were doing something wrong, you know, or write a letter or, you know, and, and we had that feeling like uh, of, you know, somebody was, was at the helm and, and we, we felt a little bit aimless. We were trying to maintain as best we could, but uh, when we had, uh, when we had this feeling like there was someone else who was giving shelter and we could see it in the faces of the devotees and we could hear it in their harikata, it just be, it, it really kindled a hope in our hearts again that, uh, that, you know, our spiritual life was not, you know, um, we never felt it was finished, but our, it, that it had gone into neutral. We felt we could put it into drive again and it actually start, you know, uh, getting excited again about our spiritual life. So, um, so we, we got started to get ready for the, um, for the Salt Spring Festival that was coming up. And uh, I had a, I was running a, a candle business at the time and I had a, an old school bus that I used for, uh, for transporting. Uh, and so we decided we're going to use the bus, we're going to get as many devotees as we can from the, from the valley who want to come. And we're going to go down to Salt Spring Island and we're going to see Srila Narayan Maharaj and take part in this festival. So we got about 20, 20 devotees uh, in and we came down to, to see and we got to the, the Gorni Thai deities from the temple there and put them in seat belts in the front seat of the, of the bus along with us. And, uh, and we went down and, uh, and Canada showed up. We had friends come from Toronto, Vancouver, Victoria, the Sharanagati and Kamloops. Uh, we had... Uh, devotees that had been uh, isolated or alienated or just disenfranchised and you know even some of Prabhupada's uh, disciples from the early six or the late 60s had just showed up at Salt Spring it was just a beautiful calling and collection of all these wonderful hearts that were just out there waiting for Srila Gurudev um, so it was just transformative, actually, that festival. And we had a lot of the devotees from Badger and Oregon came up with with Guru Dave, yeah. so it was like a, a almost like a meeting of the tribes. And and our god brothers and god sisters, especially from Badger, they just knew what to do. They knew how to get the festival going and organize the kitchen and organize the flowers and make the garlands. So they just got everybody really engaged. And um, yeah, it was, and Srila Gurudev would go around. Uh, we spent five days there together and it was, it was quite like Badger in that there was nowhere else to go. It was just this wonderful isolated environment. So um, during the day, Madhava Maharaj and Srila Gurudev would go for a walk around the grounds and whoever they would run into, they would give some personal, Srila Gurudev would give some darshan, some specific instruction to each and every person. So, and he did a lot of initiations, um, a lot of uh, second initiations as well. And there were ex wonderful classes and lots of beautiful kirtan and the devotees felt very connected. When uh, when Gurudev, when I first came across across Srila Gurudev walking on the path, um, and my and, and our friend Sarva again, he took my arm and and uh, and brought me in front of Gurudev. And this is interesting to note actually because it was one big difference we noted 
immediately about Gurudev Sangha, mm-hmm. where we we joined the temple in ISKCON in, you know, a few years after Srila Prabhupada had started ISKCON. And by the time we joined the temple, it was understood that if you really wanted to please Srila Prabhupada, you just kept your head down and kept quiet and did your service. You didn't bother Srila Prabhupada because he was very busy and he had a lot to do and he was running a worldwide movement. And, and I think this was more the mood of those around Prabhupada than Prabhupada's actual mood, because we hear, you know, uh, uh, so many times from from people who had Prabhupada's association when he wasn't so guarded uh, by by those around him, and he actually wanted interaction with his disciples and and, and his followers. But um, so for ourselves, uh, we were used to uh, having minimal interaction with Prabhupada. You know, I, I fanned him with a, with a yak tail one time when he was sitting on the Vyasa San and, uh, and, you know, and heard from him in the temple room, went on a couple of morning walks, but never spoke to him. Whereas here we found in the Sangha, people were always bringing people up. Oh, Gurudev, here's my friend, you know, she's from or he's from here or there. He's done this or that. And uh, so, so Sarva took me and and led me up to, to Gurudev and he said, he said, Srila Gurudev, this is my, my god brother and my friend Sri Lokanath. And, and Gurudev said, oh, you're a disciple of Swami Maharaj? And I said, I said, yes, Gurudev. And he, and he just said, oh, and he put his hands out and, and, and folded me into his embrace. It was just so loving and, and so beautiful. So We always really appreciated that um, about Srila Gurudev whenever we had the <clears throat> great blessing to mm-hmm. have his darshan. He would always ask us, uh, you know, uh, oh, what would Srila, what would Srila Bhaktivedanta say? You know, he would always ask us what kind of instruction we had already received from Srila Prabhupada. Um, It was um, just, it was natural, of course. It wasn't anything that was, it was just completely sincere and uh, just very, um, a lot of um, uh, reciprocal or, Mm, yeah just really nice to hear that when when we came to the 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 festival and we hadn't met Srila Gurudev yet we came with with you know some warnings from other devotees well you know like this you know Srila Narayan Maharaj he's you know he, he sometimes he minimizes Srila Prabhupada's position and and actually you know he's He's more of a bhajan anandi, you know. Uh, Prabhupada was a ghosty anandi. He was into preaching, but you know, uh, Srila Narayan Maharaj, he's, you know, more into, you know, uh, relishing the pastimes and hearing and so on, and not so much into preaching. And and he has he says some things that are different from what Prabhupada says. So I, so I had told the devotees, well, I'm going to go and check it out, and I'll report back to you on what I see when I get there. Of course, so. The very first night we went into the hall and Srila Gurudev sat on the Vyasa San and, and started speaking. It was like immediately every, every question that I had had put to me by other, by my God brothers, you know, for example, uh, about being a Bhajan Anandi and not a preacher. One of the very first things he said is, whomever you meet, you should tell them chant Hare Krishna, right? So it was obvious that his, his preaching style was coming out. When he started speaking about Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, it was like my heart um, just swelled up. I immediately uh, teared up because I realized I was in the presence of someone who had so much more love from Shula, for Srila Prabhupada than anyone I'd ever met. It was obvious that that Srila Gurudev was, was, uh, had a great devotional attitude towards Srila Prabhupada and that only, you know, he only wished to serve him, that he loved him. So, and when we heard him speaking, we, we could see that his Siddhanta was, was no different from Srila Prabhupada's, that he was firmly in the line of, of Srila Prabhupada under Srila Bhakti Siddhanta and Bhakti Prigan Keshva Maharaj. So, um, so all of our, our questions just washed away <laughs> immediately as soon as we heard, because that's that's how, you know, if you really want to to find out, if you want to gain knowledge, you have to hear. So as soon as we heard from Gurudev, we realized here is a person on 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 the same footing as as our our Diksha Guru Srila Prabhupada. So at that point, we decided that, yes, we would like to formally take Siksha from from Srila Gurudev. And um, and. I'll never forget uh, kneeling in front of Srila Gurudev in his in, uh, outside his darshan room, and um, having my having a new set of neck beads tied on, and and I, I looked up at him and I folded my hands and I said, I said, please help me to please Srila Prabhupada, 
And Gurudev said, yes, I will help you. And then I I leaned, I leaned down and he put both his hands on my back. I have a picture. Somebody snapped a picture, but, but Gurudev mm -hmm. was so kind. He was so, so merciful. Mm -hmm. um, so what am I I'm missing? So then after, oh, yeah. after Salt Spring, and then we went back to Sharanagati and we were just, you know, glowing. Everybody <laughs> was so ecstatic yeah. and so happy. And, yeah. and so it was um, a little um, confusing for the other devotees that were living at Sharanagati. There's about 100 devotees living there and some older, Jamuna, uh, Jamuna uh, of course, and Vishaka and Yadubara. And we, Shama Sundar would come up to the farm. Um, so because of Jamuna's influence, there was a lot of senior devotees that would come through. Um, Harisari came through. So, so this was, you know, they're a serious community and they're still very much um, up there and, and um, doing some nice work building the farm community. So, but there, there, so for us, we, there was about 20 of the devotees there, maybe 30 of the devotees there that had attached, were attached to Gurudev. So we would go down to the festivals, wherever there was one nearby. Badger every year, for sure. We'd go, we went to Boise, Idaho. We went to Vancouver when Sheila Gurudev came there. Um, and then um, we're, we're you know, then Trilok and I actually went to around the world. We went to, um, we heard that Gurudev was going to be in Hilo. And um, so we went to Hawaii and um, took a couple of our children there. And um, we went to Hilo. And this was when Mula Prakriti Didi uh, gave Shila Gurudev the center in Hilo and her husband, uh, Gopa Vrindapal. Yeah. Um, they had hosted Shila Gurudev there. Um, it, and I, I will share with you something very close to my heart and very intimate. Um, when Shila Gurudev was arriving, I went to get the warm water to bathe his feet. And uh, I was with Mula and we were in the kitchen and we came out because we knew Gurudev was coming out of his car. So we were, we were standing next to each other and Srila Gurudev stepped right out of his car and walked right over to Mula Prakriti. Um, and I was this you know, right next to her and her tears were popping out of her eyes and landing on Gurudev's garland. They weren't like dripping down her face. They were popping out and they were falling on Gurudev's garland. And, um, Gurudev asked her how she was doing and and there was this really wonderful heart exchange between them and for you for most of you that didn't don't know her or didn't know her uh, Mula was dying at the time she gave Gurudev that property she had cancer and um she had a very transcendental passing out of this world but I got to witness this thing that happened to, to her with Shila Gurudev. It was very intimate and very personal. Mm -hmm. When we were, we, when we used to go down to, uh, to Badger, um, before we made it to Hilo and well, and throughout, because we went to Badger for about eight years straight from, from the time after uh, the Salt Spring Festival. And it was always uh, a way for us to recharge our spiritual batteries. You know, we always Badger just was wasn't. It was a, a non discretionary item on our on our uh, uh, bucket list on our, <laughs> on our list. Yeah, and we uh, going down to Badger was always like such a wonderful. It was like a, like a, a ten day spiritual bath of our consciousness. You know, getting to see Srila Gurudev and and the friendly family atmosphere and the non judgmental nature of Gurudev's devotees. Um, I, we, we always tented out. Um, and, uh, so I'd get up early in the morning and go out on Gurudev's morning walks with him. And, uh, and sometimes in the evening at Badger, we'd be sitting, we'd be sitting and there'd be this, this vast sea of devotees all sitting. And then there would be Srila Gurudev up on his Vyasasan and, you know, and, and he, he would, you know, he, he would make his, his Puspanjali to the Srimad Bhagavatam before giving the class. And, 
And I'd look around and it, it, and it felt like I was, you know, I don't know what I was doing there, but it felt like, like the, the sages at Naimisharanya where they'd all come to hear from, from Sutta Goswami, you know, and how it was, you know, because everybody was gathered and they all had their, their ears stretched out to hear Gurudev's Harikata, you know, and it was so wonderful. And, 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 and Gurudev would, would speak and have people laughing sometimes. And I remember one time he, he was speaking about the glories of Radharani and he turned to the devotees and he said, oh, Krishna, he cannot do anything. <laughs> the devotees all laughed because it was only Gurudev could say such a thing because he's, he's such a, a, a beautiful devotee of Radharani and a Mahabhagwa, yes. Um, and so yeah badger was a steady diet it was it was as soon as we could get our tickets and get going we would do it um we also um from going over to hilo again we left hilo and we went to malaysia gurudev was having his festival there um he organized a rathiatra festival throughout um I don't know the city. <laughs> I know the festival was on the South China Sea and we were yeah, somewhere in, in Malaysia. Southern, I yeah. never knew where we were. We were just with <laughs> Gurudev. It didn't really matter. It could have been Vancouver. It could have been, you know, Hawaii or India. Um, yeah, so the Gurudev, the Rathyatra Festival in Malaysia was fantastic. Yeah, we went through the streets and, um, and, uh, we had to, it was, it was impossible to get all the way down the street quickly because every time we'd come past a house, the, the, the people of the home would come out with this offering plate to offer to the deities, to Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra. So we'd have to stop and then the, the, you know, the householders would make their pranams and make their offerings. And it was really a very, very beautiful Rathiatra festival with just a small cart. And it was also Gurudev's Vyasa Puja while we were there. Yeah, and Gurudev made made offering to his whole parampara, and then during the during the kirtan, uh, the devotees were like just uh, <laughs> devotees were in this beautiful kirtan, and Gurudev was up on the stage, and and I and I I was up on the stage. I can't remember why, um, but yeah, I I and I offered the ghee lamp and so on. I looked down and I could see the devotees, and they were just. I mean, some of them were, they were weeping. They were, their, their devotion was just so beautiful to see that they were just, you know, totally Gurudev's, you know? And, um, and during that time, uh, we, uh, we had the opportunity to put on a play. Charu Chandrakadidi was putting on a, a play of uh, the pastime of Jada, Jada Bharat. Yeah. And so, um, and we were having a bit of a difficult time because the, a lot of the devotees that she had enlisted to take part in her play were from China and uh, and didn't speak English. So it was very difficult for us. And to... we didn't speak Chinese. Right. So <laughs> so uh, I was I was enlisted to be the narrator of the play and uh, and uh, wound up actually sort of sort of helping out as assistant director and props person. And I just kind of took on whatever I could to help the play come together. And uh, and the the play happened. It went off without a hitch. And then and what was what was really nice was um, Srila Gurudev after the plays, as he did in Badger, he would always say, "Oh, you know, the person who played this part, you know, it's you know, uh, you did very well." And then he would give a little, maybe a little bit of a talk about you know, person who played this part and the, uh, you know, the pastime involved. And so he went through the whole the whole roster of all the devotees who had acted in the play. Uh, Govinda had played uh, uh, Kali Ma, and she jumped down off the altar and throttled the throttled the followers of Kali who were going to uh, put Jada Bharat to death and and so on. And uh, and uh, but I, as the as the narrator, was was just sort of an incidental character. I didn't play a character, right? So Gurudev didn't say anything to me, and I thought, well, that's fine. You know, everything's everything's good. So then afterwards. Gurudev came out and he walked down the hallway and all the devotees were standing there just to bid him farewell as he as he went back to his quarters and he walked right down the line and then he stopped right in front of me and and looked at me put his hand on my shoulder and said thank you very much <laughs> so <laughs> you can see sometimes you think the spiritual master doesn't know but he's always aware of what's in our heart you know so that was a that was a special moment for me that just just realizing that you know you don't always get the the external approbation that your ego is looking for but the guru sees guru knows he uh, you know then we went to navadweep with shila gurudev mm -hmm. made all the arrangements for park Ram there um 
Yeah. Um... Actually, when we first arrived in Navidweep, it was really kind of sweet because when we saw Gurudev, we, um, we explained to him how beholden we were to the devotees. Uh, Charu Chandrika was one of them, and other devotees who had made, made arrangements for our, our taxi, had, had uh, arranged for our accommodation, and, and really made our trip so easy. And Gurudev was so pleased to hear his devotees being, being glorified. It was, uh, it was really, really nice. Uh, he, he loved hearing that his devotees were taking good care also of, of Swami Maharaj's disciples, because Gurudev was always very, yeah. very deferential to, to Prabhupada's disciples. When we had um, just a, a, a darshan with Srila Gurudev in Mayapur, in Navadweep, um, it was just Tree and I, and and then Srila Gurudev's brother was there in the room. Mm -hmm. But he, Gurudev was was asking Vrinda because she was in and out doing her service, and he was saying, "Are all the devotees cared for? Is everybody okay?" And there was like, I think they had opened the gates and allowed a lot of the uh, nomadic people from uh, the area coming in, and there was thousands of people there in Gurudev's like is everyone cared for is everyone okay so it was nice to just be in the room one-on-one -on -one with Gurudev and he was talking this way and just expressing his concern for everyone um, what year are we in uh, uh that was 2010 no that one. no sorry 2009 yeah I think it was 2009 2009 sorry yeah so um, um, yeah, and then I had another incident like the one with the play, where <laughs> hadn't I hadn't been to the Dom for for thirty five thirty uh, thirty years I think. Yeah. So nineteen seventy eight was the last time I'd been to to the Dom. So I was there and I was feeling um, pretty unworthy and unappreciative um, because I was just coming in from doing whatever I do in my regular life, you know, and, and having, you know, family life and so on and so forth. And I was feeling very, very fallen and, 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 and desperately unqualified to appreciate where I was and what I was doing. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, but I was still, I was going on the morning walks. And so Gurudev came out and he would walk down in between. There were a lot of sleeping bodies on, uh, in this big pond all, and he would walk out between on his way to his car. And, uh, and so I, I bent down and offered my obeisances. And I, I, I'd actually been weeping a little bit that morning because I was feeling, I was feeling pretty woebegone and, and hopeless. And, uh, and so I, I was getting up very slowly from my obeisances. And I, and I heard Mahojvila say to me beside, she said, Trilok, Trilok, it's Gurudev. And I, I lifted my head and Gurudev had stopped with Madhav Maharaj and, and, and uh, Brajananda or Brajanath, sorry, um, and had stopped and was and was looking at me, and he asked me if I was okay. And uh, and so I just folded my hands and said, "Yes, of course, Srila Gurudev." But I realized then, even more than ever, that Gurudev knew what I was going through, knew what was in my heart, and was was so loving that he was just checking in with me to to see if I was all right, you know, yeah. which was which it was a very very special moment for me. <laughs> It was also Gorpanima. So um, on Gorpanima night, um, we were in the temple room with Srila Gurudev, and there was again hundreds and hundreds of devotees. And and I happened to be about three feet from the stage where Srila Gurudev was standing on. It was a small stage, probably just his Vyasa son, and and then you know a room for ten or twelve devotees but Gurdi was dancing and the Arctic was going on and we were having kirtan and and uh, and the moon was coming in through the ceiling or something in the in the mm -hmm. temple room and we were all dancing and singing and I was just praying Lord take me now there isn't <laughs> a better time just take me now Gurdi was dancing and it was just beautiful magical um yeah so that was Navadweep then of course we saw Srila Gurudev in Vancouver yeah the first thing well first thing when Gurudev came out through the doors in Vancouver Mahojvala immediately walked over to him and she at, she thanked him for coming and then burst into tears <laughs> Gurudev just reached over and patted her on the head that's all right that's all right and uh 
And so then our very first darshan, uh, Gurudev came back to uh, Rugbeer's home. Mm -hmm. And the devotees, all the devotees, uh, actually Gurudev, had, previous to this, when we'd been in Badger, Gurudev was in a, in a darshan. And the Canadian devotees were invited to come in for a darshan. So we were all there and we were, and there was a lot of really nice exchange going on. And Gurudev just announced right out of the blue, he said, I want to go to Canada. And all the devotees just kind of went, Jai! So Brajananda, Brajanath, I'm sorry, Brajanath, forgive me. Uh, Brajanath was immediately had to start making arrangements and so on because Gurudev said, well, how can we do this and where should we go? And, and the devotees from Montreal were saying, oh, you should come to Montreal. And the devotees from Vancouver were saying, no, no, Vancouver, you should come. Well, as fate would have it, he came to Vancouver and when his first darshan that he gave, he came to um, Rugbeer's home and he looked around at the devotees and he said, why have I come here? And the devotees all, you know, were quiet and well, I, I don't know, you know, what kind of answer can I give, you know? And Gurudev looked at us very solemnly and he said, because death is very near. And he said, I have come to remind you that death is very near. So don't waste the time that you have left. And it was, it was like a thunderbolt, you know, to all of us. Um, the other thing that happened that was really remarkable while Gurudev was in Vancouver was um, we had, we had uh, some programs at the Vedic Cultural Center in Richmond, um, which is a suburb of Vancouver. And, uh, and I was, you know, a feeling a little bit responsible to help make sure that things went okay. Um, and Gurudev was coming in a little bit late for the program. And so we were making arrangements for him to come in and, uh, and he was using the elevator to go, to go up. It was just a, a second floor temple room. And so I went up, uh, I, I raced up the stairs first to make sure that everything was prepared. Everything was okay for Gurudev because he, he had actually been feeling a little under the weather. And, uh, and so I, uh, I checked to see, you know, which door he should go through. And so, on, and, and I, and I opened the doors to the, to the main temple room and I'll never forget looking at, and, and I'm sure that uh, Brajanath and Madhav Maharaj have also seen this so many times, but it, I'm sure it never gets old. And I saw a couple of hundred devotees standing there with their hearts in their hands you know, just waiting for Gurudev to show up. And it was, it was such a beautiful sight because all these, these glowing, smiling faces and saris and dhotis and tea lock and neck beads. And it was just, it was like a scene straight out of the spiritual world. It was just a, such a beautiful sight. Uh, and then of course, Gurudev came in and, and gave class. And, uh, and then Gurudev went to Toronto. And then Gurudev went to Toronto. Yeah, he was going to Toronto from there. So I, um, and he was, as fate would have it, he was staying at, uh, at my good friend Shashvata's house. Shashvata and I had been friends before uh, joining the temple, joined the temple together and, uh, and have a, you know, almost a lifelong friendship. So I thought, well, if, if Gurudev's staying at my friend's home, I'm going out there because I'm going to get a chance to get some association, the like of which I haven't had before. So, uh, so I, I hopped a plane uh, out to Toronto. I left a little bit early before Gurudev's program ended in Vancouver. Um, do you have anything to add about the end of the program in Vancouver? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, the, uh, and Gurudev was going to Toronto actually for a rest. He wasn't really going to hold programs per se. Uh, as, as I said, in, in Vancouver, he was feeling a little under the weather. And uh, so uh, Shashwata's wife, Anangapriya, is, uh, is a naturopath and, and uh, mm -hmm. quite, well, she's quite a gifted healer anyway. And, uh, and she, um, so uh, the, the plan was that she would do some treatments for Gurudev and, and assist him in uh, perhaps in any way that she could, and that he would just rest up um, while, uh, while he was there. So, uh, so uh, Shamarani, Didi, and, uh, and Vasanti uh, came along, and, and we stayed at a friend's house just uh, down the way. But we would have our morning, morning walks with Gurudev. It was just down to the end of, of Shashvata's driveway and back each day. So it, were really a very, uh, it was very an intimate, small group of us. Uh, but one of the, the things that happened was that Gurudev really wanted to go and see Niagara Falls because he'd heard about it. 
And, uh, and so we, we decided we would get up early one morning and we would take Gurudev out and show him and Niagara Gurudev Falls. Decided. Yeah, Gurudev <laughs> decided. And we decided, that, okay, yes, okay, we'll, we'll make this happen. So, uh, and... Uh, uh, Actually, Gurudev decided. It and, yeah, and, and Jagadish <laughs> drove, drove Gurudev out in the, in the, in the van and uh, we went out, uh, I drove uh, Shamarani Didi and Vasanti Didi out uh, in a car and we all met out at, at Niagara Falls and it was a beautiful morning it was sparkling the sun was out and it was but it was quite cold and how did Gurdjieff pronounce it Niagara Niagara Falls he's Niagara Falls because later when I saw him he said oh I saw you at Niagara Falls so I uh by the time I got up Gurdjieff was out there with Madhav Maharaj and Brajanath and um and uh, I came up and, and Gurudev looked at me. He said, oh, it's so cold <laughs> because the mist was rising off the falls and it was almost freezing outside. So we had a, a very, very short uh, sort of uh, uh, darshan of the falls. But what happened was after, uh, Gurudev was very interested in, in this because it is, it's one of the eight wonders of the world, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and so, um, so, uh, I got on, on Google and looked up some information when we got back to Shashwada's house um, and, and printed off a couple of sheets of information about, about Niagara Falls. And, uh, and so I, we put it in a, a little file folder and we brought it up to Madhav Maharaj and we said, uh, you know, we've, we've made a, a list of, of facts about Niagara Falls. And Madhav Maharaj went to take it from us. And oh, that's very nice. Thank you. And and Shashvata, who was all who's a really great nectar hound, and knows, he said, "Well, do you think we'd be able to give this to Gurudev ourselves?" And he said, "Oh yes, that would be all right." Because Madhu Maharaj is always into facilitating other people's uh, 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 meeting with Srila Gurudev. So Gurudev came out and he sat on the porch in the sun with us. And we I've got a few pictures of this, but he. Uh, we, we started telling him things about Niagara Falls, how many, you know, cubic feet of water goes over every so many seconds and how the falls are wearing away and how high they are and so on. But then we just handed him the brochure and he opened it up and he looked at it and he started reading from it. And it was like a, it was like a grade school student reading. Oh, when you go to Niagara Falls, you will see that there is so much of this and that. And it was just it was so charming because he was so unguarded and 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 just uh, just, just like a young man reading and hearing about this, this wonder of, of Krishna's natural creation. The other thing, when Ananga Priya was treating Gurudev, there's these water baths you can put your feet in. You may have seen them. They withdraw toxins through the feet and the water turns blackish as you're soaking in them. I, they were very popular back then. Somebody had one at Badger one year. Actually. Yeah, I think they did. So Ananga Priya comes running out. She goes, you guys got to see this. And everybody went into the room where Gurde was sitting with his feet in this water bath. And no kidding, the bubbles were yellow and saffron. Yeah, it was like a kind of a pink saffron it color. It wasn't anywhere near gray or black. It yeah. was saffron. We're like Gurudev's and Gurudev's just sitting there because Ananga Priya came and she said, you know, I'm I'm alone here with Gurudev. You you should come, you know. So so Shashwad and I came and we sat in the room and I and I'm looking at the foot bath and going, wow, that's that's kind of transcendental, you know. And <laughs> so we're sitting there. And then, uh, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, when you're sitting in Gurudev's presence, it's like, uh, like Damodar Prabhu was saying, you're, you're a little bit speechless. You're kind of in awe of the, you know, the, the, uh, the personality that you're in the presence of. And, and, uh, and I know that in, in the scriptures, it says the Diksha Guru is seen more as your master and Siksha Guru, you have more of a friendly relation with. But as far as I'm concerned, I was always much more in awe and reverence when I was in Gurudev's presence. So, so, uh, but I thought a little bit about it and I thought, and I, and I said, Srila Gurudev, I really appreciate uh, in your Pranam mantra where it says that you, you're attached to uh, Krishna, especially when he serves the lotus feet of, of Radharani. And Gurudev sat back and he looked at me and he said, oh, if I had not come, you would not know these things. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, and at that point, very shortly thereafter, my sister showed up and there's a little bit of a backstory there because my sister had come to the program. She's always been very attracted by Krishna consciousness. Um, but our family kind of, after they lost one 
<laughs> one child to the, the Hare Krishna movement. They sort of, they took away her Bhagavad Gita and her, <laughs> and her Japa beads when I, when she tried to get into devotional service back in the seventies, when I was first, when I first uh, got involved with Srila Prabhupada's movement. Um, so, but she came and she was taking part in the programs. And again, Shamarani Didi was encouraging her, look, you know, this is a chance, you know, you've got the association of a pure devotee here. You should really be thinking about, you know, maybe taking initiation from him because this is, you may not get this chance again. And, and Linda was very, she was, she recognized the magnitude of what taking, taking initiation from a spiritual master, that this is a big move. And so we went into Gurudev's room just before he was to go and do a program um, in Toronto. And she said, I'm, I'm unsure that I'm, I'm worthy of making this, um, this commitment to you. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I, I want to, but I'm not sure that I can maintain or, or be, uh, you know, up to the challenge of being a faithful disciple. And Gurudev looked at her and he said, there, there is no need for you to be uh, fearful. He says, I will help you. And then, and then he said something that was really interesting because Linda had, had quit eating meat early on, because, uh, partially because of her association with, with me and partially because she, she could see that it was unethical, but that she, she'd sort of gotten back into it a little bit because of dietary concerns or whatever. And Gurudev looked at her and he said, you should know that meat is me eat. He didn't know any of this from me about her, but he said, meat is me eat. You are saying that if, if I eat the meat, then later I can be me eat. I will be the one that is eaten. So you should not do this anymore. You should give up eating meat. And Linda, Linda was completely dumbstruck that he knew this. Uh, so then the devotees interacted with him a little bit, got him ready to go for his program. And then, so he turned to her and he said, so, what is your decision? And he said, and, and she said to him, I think I would like to become your disciple. And he, and he said, oh, you are my darling daughter. And, he, and then, he, then he took some neck beads and he gave them to me to tie onto her neck. So then she asked later if she would be able to have a, a, a darshan with Gurudev. Like to, and the devotee said, well, Gurudev's resting right uh, during this visit. So he's not really giving any darshan, you know, really sorry. Uh, and she's, oh, that's okay, that's okay. So she went back to her home, which was about an hour's drive from where we were staying. So then just after this, this incident with the, with the foot bath and with our little interaction that we were having with Gurudev, she just showed up and she said, I felt like my guru was calling me and, and came in and got to sit in and have a little bit of a darshan with Gurudev. So Gurudev satisfied her heart's desire. Um, and... Um, I don't know any other any other nectar tidbits. I've been doing most of the talking. Oh goodness, that's about an hour. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I didn't think we were going to go that. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no, no, you got more time. But I always say to the speakers, you can have. Uh, you don't have to take all the time, or you can take all the time. Whatever you're inspired by, basically. It's been so beautiful. I've never done a summary of of, of two people speaking at the same time. So. Uh, my summary might be as long as your 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 push punch. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been I was, around. I was interested to ask, actually. I want to ask a quick question. Did you um were your were your parents devout Christians? Uh, no. My dad was a churchgoer. Uh, my mother not uh, not at all. Um, dad uh, kept his his faith within himself. Uh, I was raised Anglican, but uh, not really. Uh, he never spoke to us about about spiritual matters uh, okay. at all. And you? Uh, my father was a churchgoer because the society demanded it. We were Roman Catholic, but my mother, I believe, um, has come in close contact with saints. Um, right. She. Right. I was probably only like it was might have been 1966 so six years before I met the devotees um, she was standing in line and I have a picture of her she has a broken leg and she's in Hawaii in Honolulu and the devotees are serving prashadam and she's standing in a line. And then another time I was about 13 years old and they had gone to Las Vegas for a holiday and she had a bag of coins and she said, take this down. There's some Hare Krishna people that just moved in two wow. blocks away. 
take them down, take this down and give it to them because it was a bag of quarters or something. So my friend and I, you know, we were scared stiff, but we went down to the house. We just left it on the porch. And that was where Bauhadok, who uh, was the temple president in Vancouver forever, um, they started the center in Victoria and that's where they started it because his father was the mayor and he and uh, Nirupama uh, started the Victoria Center there. And, yeah. um, and then another time my mother took me down to um, City Hall. Um, there was a, a demonstration. Uh, we were protesting the Amchitka the nuclear tests that the United States were doing in the um, in the north near Alaska, Aleutian Islands, yeah. Aleutian Islands, and um, we were protesting. And this devotee walked by, um, probably from Baudak Center there, and he smelled like strawberry incense. And and I kept following him with my eye as he was walking by. But my mother had dropped us off and picked us up. We were just like twelve or thirteen years old. And, um, and she asked me if I had seen anything interesting or heard anything interesting. And I said, yeah, well, I saw this Hare Krishna person. <laughs> so I have a feeling in my, and my sister's also an initiated disciple of Srila Prabhupada. Oh, so, yeah. and my, 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 even my grandmother, she was very saintly. So yeah, I yeah. had, I had, nice. I think there was something some going good, on. Some there. Good uh, some scars. And we, um, yeah. your beautiful son, uh, um, Dianandan. Dianandan, he, he spoke, um, I realized, yes, because he was in the candle workshop, so I, I got the connection. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, he's a real sweetheart, and um, I, I wanted to ask you, actually, whether were you able, um, sorry, this is a slightly private question, and please don't answer it if That's it's okay. private, but in the period that he kind of, as you said, let's say took his space from Krishna consciousness, which is quite common for second generation, and they come back, did you feel, did you feel like you could give him that space to do that? How, what was your, how did you reconcile that with yourself as, a, as parents? Absolutely. I, uh, my, my attitude was uh, that, you know, every soul's got their own journey and you can't, you can't browbeat somebody into being God conscious. So when, uh, and, and uh, Jai went through a period where he didn't want to be different. We moved around a little bit. And when we moved back to Toronto at one point, he had decided, and he was quite young at that point, but he decided he didn't want to be different from his friends. He wanted to be just like them. And, uh, and you know, uh, actually, no, he was, he was more like nine, I think yeah. at the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was. So, um, so it, there was a, there was a period where he had to, you know, uh, you know, be a teenager and get his yayas out and, you know, like just let it fly. And, and but I remained very, very good friends with him through all of that, as well as his father. I tried not to wag my finger too much unless I saw him getting too close to a cliff that he didn't want to fall off of. Um, <laughs> and and, uh, That's cool. and uh, yeah, uh, and then just di uh, by dialoguing with him and his friends and sort of relating to some of the experiences they were having and telling them some of the stories of what I'd been through and letting them know that, yes, I had also had feet of clay and I'd been through a lot of the things they were through. And by the way, this is how I sort of discovered that there's more to this world than what meets the eye. Uh, they started turning on to it. And, uh, and then uh, Jai joined me in my candle business and we started working together in the shop and he just started asking me questions and I started telling him answers from the Bhagavad Gita. And it was just a, it was a really organic, he sort of just kind of re-entered, but he was still a little bit of a wild man at that stage. He was still, you know, kicking his heels up, but he was becoming more interested. And that's why when, when Shamarani Didi showed up at our house and started having these programs, I called him. He was staying with a, with a couple of friends. They'd rented a place together a few blocks away. And I said, you really have to come and start hearing some of these classes. And as soon as he started listening to Shamarani and hearing about Gurudev, it was like a switch clicked, you know, yeah. and, uh, and then he was gone. <laughs> I, could, I could see when, uh, I won't ask what a yah ya is, by the way, we'll just put that down <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a Canadianism, but uh, I could see when he was speaking, he really had, um, he had it, he had that thing that second generation devotees have, which is, they don't have to try too hard, they're just devotees, it's very beautiful, they have this glow about them, yeah. and uh, that came through, and I, I really appreciated how I love that 
the way in which you wove your stories between the Vapu and the Vani, because it's really great to get the Vani of Gurudev out to like express what his mission is about honoring the Prabhupada disciples. About I love what I'm going to say a bit more about opening up the secrets Prabhupada left to you. Uh, but it was lovely the way you wove that with the stories, because the stories really convey the mood. So you get the sweetness across and you get the sedanta across and that helps it go deeper. And it was very special you did it as a couple because we've had couples speak one after another. We've never had couples kind of speak. Sometimes you have couples when they just interrupt each other, which is kind of cute. <laughs> but you two actually really danced very nicely together in the whole in the whole sharing, which I, I really appreciated. And I loved how you opened. That's a very special comment you made right at the get-go. You said, and it was perfectly stated, Gurudev came to open up the secrets that Srila Prabhupada left us. And that is just so perfect because, because that just shows how internalized the reconciliation of Gurudev and Prabhupada is in your heart. And it's so uh, core to the one Chaitanya family uh, 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 message, which is based on Shri, Srila Shri Garanga Samaj by Bhakti Thakur, which to understand that our parampara is one great, that one great team of mandris have come from the spiritual world that are working together through time and circumstance, depending on the time and circumstance, in this eternal team to bring to us this Mahabhav in our hearts as, our, as the fallen rascals we are. What is, I mean, what a story, aside from it being the real thing and they're giving us what we really want and what we really need, what a story to be able to do this over hundreds and thousands of years. I mean, obviously we go back to Mahabhav, we go back a lot further than that. And the fact that these, yeah, the fact that these two great Acharyas did this, have done this together, and you've witnessed that is just, and to me as a Gurudev disciple, I never met Prabhupada, I wanted Prabhupada as a guru, but of course I arrived in 96 in Vrindavan, so it was too late, but it means a lot to me, I, I consider my generation are like the Trustafarians, you, you did the blood, sweat and tears bit on the streets <laughs> and the book distribution and Prabhupada is the anger of Prabhupada, and I'm like the Trustafarian, really very fortunate to be the recipient to that. So I, 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 on, I was taught by my guru day by Srila Bhakti Dante Maharaj to really honor, not in a kind of a distant formal way, but in a familiar, like as our parents and our grandparents and our uncles and our aunties. Thank you so much for, for giving well, you us know, what you The most fallen first, Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's interesting because we as, as Prabhupada's disciples, um, you know, when we entered Gurudev's Sangha, it, we felt like we were, we were back in the Bhakta program again. And right. it was, and, and for, for some that was, it was a little jarring because, because, you know, having been in devotional service for so long, you're used to getting a certain level of respect from other devotees, et cetera, et cetera. And, but for me, it was, it was so enlivening, you know, it was like, oh, there's new tunes and there's new bhajans and there's new books and there's new pastimes. And, and, and it was like when we sat down in Navadweep, one devotee was correcting me a little bit about my etiquette while I was taking prasadam. And another, another devotee turned to him and he said, hey, don't you know, this is, this is a Prabhupada disciple, you know, and so on. And I, and I said, I said, no, but Prabhu, if he didn't tell me, how would I ever know? Right. Yeah. So it was like, when when we saw the the shining faces and the beautiful devotion of the devotees of Gurudev Sangha, of Gurudev's devotees, we were humbled, and uh, we didn't feel you know I mean we feel privileged that we were able to do our part to help pave the way in some small way for Gurudev's coming, and and the devotees, but really we felt like we were the recipients of so much mercy that you know Prabhupada had prepared us, you know and. Um, uh, you know, every morning when we get up and we offer, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, of incense to to Prabhupada and Gurudev, we just feel so fortunate that that we have the two of them in, in our lives. You know, and we always say that. You know, when we we think about, you know, if we're having a bit of a difficult time, and we say, well, our children are healthy, and we've had the association of two pure devotees in one lifetime. How many people yeah. can can say that? Yeah, we have actually we... seven so, children. Seven. So, wow. Seven. Three each, wow. and then we have our daughter Usha, who um, we've adopted. Uh, she's thirty. <laughs> wow! Can but, you um, can you adopt me as well? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was just going to say, my my oldest daughter Radharani, she made a film for a program mm -hmm. at, at college. Uh, she was taking communication, so they had to do a, a documentary film. So she made it on on us as a family uh, being devotees. And um, she interviewed her siblings. And one of the things our other son said, Radha Balava said, he said, 
he said, you know, I would bring my friends over to the house uh, because you were talking to Tree about how he uh, felt how his son was, you know, like Jayananda would go in and out. So uh, Radhabalaba said, um, I would bring my friends over and they were always so thankful to come to our house because there'd be hot food, prashadam, and also because um, they didn't have spiritual roots at home. A lot of them just, their, their family just didn't talk about anything spiritual. So for them, it was like, we were cool. We were good. We would always have, like, we had a house full of teenagers all the time. I don't know how Shamarani stood it when she stayed with us. <laughs> she just sat out on my old aunt granny's rocker and she was chanting her job. And yeah. my kids were running off with their and their skateboards, skateboards and then their bikinis and yeah it's like you sound like a you sound like a mixture between the harry krishna walton's partridge family and little house <laughs> on the prairie all in one <laughs> a little bit Perfect. sounds little beautiful bit. um i loved your story about how you were very gracious in the way that you responded to the devotees who who were a bit like no we don't want the books and what what was so beautiful was it, it turned out by your by your subtlety and nuance and kind of knowing when to push it and when to hold back what struck me was that you gave you gave paramatma the space to work in everybody's heart and end up coming to um to salter island after spring island afterwards had you pushed you would have had resistance and paramatma wouldn't have have spoken those soft words that paramatma does those kind of almost un unspoken words where you can hear it in your heart but you can't hear anything that comes from Paramatma and by you playing your role beautifully in the orchestra of Gurudev of Parampara those people were given the space for Parampara to to a Parampara through Paramatma to speak to them and that's a very magical thing that you expressed to us which which is kind of instructive for my Seva and other I'm sure other people. Well, and what happened there, which I didn't uh, mention, was that after we went back to Victoria, Duty Dar called us. Yeah, said, and, and I want said, the books. Yeah, he says, I've read them. I want I want all my disciples to read these books and take shelter of Srila Narayama. Amazing, amazing. So he brought all of his disciples uh, to Gurudev's Lotus Feet as a result of reading those they books. They weren't really like his disciples. They were just all living yeah. in Swami Mills. Well, it they had like, accepted him as their guru. It was kind of a loosey-goosey community yeah. of people. But anyway. Loosey -goosey. I'm picking up these Canadian terms. I love it. Lucy yeah, Lucy so, Canadian Goosey. <laughs> so this this festival, I mean, I was on the same world tour, but I didn't get to Canada. I was in oh. Badger in Nigeria. I was in Badger in Nigeria. I had this feeling that you didn't mention it, but I got this funny feeling that Pashadam was off the scale at at, at uh, Spring at uh, Spring, Island. Spring Island. Island. Yeah, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Mercy was just everywhere. Yeah. No, just I'm talking everywhere. Prashadam Mercy specifically. Prashadam oh, Mercy. Yeah. Prashadam and the yeah. Kirtan. <laughs> Class. Did you have a, was there an amazing pizza there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I was pretty busy. Yeah. But, but, but on a more serious point, what you said about, um, I remember just saying something about Shula Parapad and Shula Gurudev, and also how Shula Gurudev was so like, I mean, he was so at our, he was at our service all the time. Like I was in his rooms all, a lot of the time. And honestly, I often say, if someone would come in and say, Gurudev, we've, we've just bought this house on the moon. And we want you to come and preach there next week. He'd be, yeah, where's the space <laughs> rocket? He'd just come. Right of Maharaj and Brajadav had to kind of like organize things and, and set expectations. But Gurudev would go anywhere. And I remember in California once, he was, uh, it was the year before he disappeared, and he had a, a Leela involving some sunstroke. And he just, he heard how the devotees in Europe, in Italy, were, were, were pining for him. It's a big trip from California to, to Italy, is a big trip to Germany and then over to Italy. It was like a whole day of travel he was not physically in the right state you know from an external point of view to be doing that trip he discharged himself from hospital and flew over to be with the devotees his level of savor was and the same thing with Prabhupada because Prabhupada during his disappearance Leela there was one time when he was trying to get up on the Vyasa Sun actually he was not able to walk most of the time but apparently as soon as he saw the Vyasa Sun he was like nothing could stop him for the whole period of going up to the Vyasa Sun speaking mm -hmm. And coming off of the sun, it was like there was nothing, there was no, there was no uh, illness Leela at all. So the two, these two personalities are extraordinary. I remember in 1996 when Gurudev came to Badger for the first time, I wasn't really, I never went to Iskon, so I didn't know the politics, but I could feel the mood. And in the Badger temple, 
there was a third of the audience that were like Gurudev loved him, a third of the audience that was neutral, and a third of the audience that were kind of like, you know, they were kind of, if you saw them in another place, they were kind of like rednecks with their arms folded, you know, I was wondering mm -hmm. whether they're gonna, you know, <laughs> commit some violence or something, they're quite aggressive. By the end of the hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, the whole movie was just absolutely transcendental. Everybody was on Gurudev's side, and you could see how much Gurudev was offering all the, everything he was getting, he was offering to his Gurudev and he was offering to Prabhupada. The, the level of love and respect for Prabhupada was really, really extraordinary. Um, so yeah, I experienced that. And um, you mentioned about how, yeah, this is really beautiful. I love how you said that Gurudev said that Krishna can't do anything. And I love, like, this is where people get a bit confused. You know, they say, well, <clears throat> Prabhupada came to say Krishna, first be Krishna conscious, first be conscious. And then you can recognize Krishna is God. And Gurudev came to tell us that Krishna is not God. Yeah. And like this, <laughs> if you read those words, you think, hang on, these guys are contradicting each other. But no, yeah. it's like, I don't know if you were ever there when, uh, where Srila Bhaktivedanta, um, uh, Tripakram Goswami Maharaj and Gurudev were, were on the Vyasasana together and they'd have these wonderful disagreements. And Tripakram Maharaj was literally like just stoking it to kind of, antagonize Gurudev so he get as much nectar out of Gurudev as possible. It was very, very beautiful. Uh, so, um, yeah, that, that was an absolutely beautiful and delightful Pushpanjali. I kind of don't really want to bring it to an end, but that is the end of our 60-second program, and a big, big, massive thank you to... Uh, thank you, to thank you for inviting us, and, and thanks to beautiful. I'm sure we must have bumped into each other a couple of times, because we've been to all the same places so we must yeah, you look familiar. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah have. maybe a bit older a little less hair but um, I, ho I hope we meet again indeed um yeah you've got a beautiful sangha we've got karuna mai over in England. we we've posted yeah. or she we didn't really do anything oh by the way Didi, i loved it when you said about going to niagara falls or niagara niagara and you you were contradicting your husband saying no no we didn't make the decision he did you, you, you yeah. corrected him twice i like that that was great that was great <laughs> um thank you so much